I'd like to demonstrate the use of the knot tying uh, station and the knot tester for you. And, and the first time that I'm going to do this, I'm going to demonstrate just a Tennessee slider backed up with hitches. And my goal here is to create uh, a good knot so we can show how this resists load on the uh, fast knot tying board. So what I've done is I've created my Tennessee slider. I'm going to come down here and cinch this down. I'm going to reset my hemostat a little bit lower down. I'm going to create a hitch, come down. And you can do this to practice under arthroscopic control or open control. There's a little pass point. I'm going to create my second hitch and reverse the post. So now my post is in my right hand. I'm going to come down, cinch that, and again go really past point, and I'm going to back this up with my third hitch, come down, and finalize that, that knot. And my goal is to really, really cinch this down so I can show you how this knot tester works. Now the mandrel size of the uh, knot station is matched with the mandrel size of the knot tester. So I'm going to gently slip that knot off and as you can see it creates a loop. And I'm going to transfer this now onto the knot tester and put that over the top. The, if you zoom in on the end of the knot tester, I'm going to tip this for you, you can see those little marks there. The first mark is exactly matched with the size of the mandrel and each millimeter down is signified by those different dots as we go down on the knot tester. So I know that my baseline loop, the loop security, matched the size of the mandrel, and that's a good thing. And then if we zoom back out for a second, once you load the knot on there, back here on the device, we have a spring gauge, 10, 15, 20 pounds. When I actuate the handle, that is going to come up, and it's going to stress the loop. And so I'm going to stabilize the base, and if we zoom back in on the knot itself, on that loop, which is positioned, you can see that as I pull back with 15 pounds and hold that for about 15 seconds, we can assess how much stretch there is. Now I'm going to relax. You can see I've relaxed the tension. I'm going to slip that loop back off, slide it back onto this conical-shaped mandrel, slide it down, and you can see as we zoom in that that loop has displaced only about a half a millimeter, and that's acceptable. We think that about three millimeters or more is unacceptable. So this will be an example of using the knot tester with a solid knot. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the knot tester works with deliberately creating a knot that isn't very good quality. I'm going to start with the same Tennessee slider, go over, over, pass through. So my post now is in my left hand. I'm going to come down and gently deliver that over my mandrel, push that down. I'm going to shorten my post. You notice I did not really flip the knot, do anything to create a whole lot of friction in there. I'm going to pass some hitches and I'm going to keep my tension in my left hand. So my left hand is the post, and it's going to remain the post. So there's my first hitch. I'm going to come down, pass another hitch, and I have not flipped it. If it was done properly, I would have flipped the post to my right hand, but I'm not doing that. So there's another hitch. I'm cinching it down, but primarily all the tension's in my left hand. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to come down, and again, cinch this down, but my post is in my left hand. Essentially what I've done now is I've stacked a series of half hitches on a single post in my left hand. So that knot might look pretty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slip it off of my mandrel. I'm going to gently come over here and I'm going to look at the loop security. And as I put it on the cone, we can zoom in and the loop is actually not so bad. I mean, it's the same size. It came to the first dot. That's the same size as the mandrel. 
I'm going to gently slip that off of our conical sizer, put it on the two uh, prongs, and I'm going to stabilize my base, and then I'm going to pull to 15 pounds of tension, and hold that there. I'm going to wait for 10 or 15 seconds. We've been using 15 seconds, but most of the displacement that you see is very quick. I'm going to now take this off of the testing device. I'm going to slide it back onto my measurement device. And as you can see, now this loop has expanded one, two, sorry, one, two, three. And we're just about down to three millimeters of loop displacement. And that's not acceptable. All right, finally, I'm going to show uh, what would happen if you created, for example, a Duncan loop and didn't back it up with half hitches. So, you know, plenty of wraps around. One, two, three, four wraps around. I'm going to come back here, press this knot. I'm going to come back up with my stitch, come down through. dress my knot by pulling out some of the tension. And I'm going to slide down. And if you were in the OR and simply did that and didn't back it up with any hitches, this is what would happen. Okay, We were going to slide this off of our mandrel, gently transfer this over to the knot tying station, loop security. Not bad, it's still the same size as the original mandrel. I'm going to put this on the knot tester. This is a Duncan loop that has not been backed up with half hitches, and now we're going to pull with 15 pounds, complete failure immediately. And that's the reason why you back up always with three half hitches and reverse the post.